Right, so hey everyone and welcome back to another budget photography video. So, I'm a phone geek. Let's just put that out there. I like phones. I love mobile phones and what they can do for us and how far technology has come along in the last few years. Now, recently I changed from the P30 to the Note 20 Ultra. Now, this has 108 megapixels and 8K video recording. One of the reasons why I brought this device is because of its 8K. It's, um, it's not very good. Now, before I start moaning about it and start showing you footage and lots of other different things, you need to kind of understand the difference between something like this and something ugh, like this. Now, I'm using the 5D as an example because it's the only second camera that I currently have. So, if you've watched one of my previous videos, you will see a teardown of a phone camera. But, in case you haven't seen that, phone cameras, and well, cameras in general, work from a very, very simple principle. You have a lens, you have a camera. You attach the lens to the camera, obviously. Behind the lens, on something like the DSLRs, you have a mirror. The mirror lifts up and the sensor is exposed. Like that. Now, a lot of cameras nowadays, including phone cameras, don't have mirrors. They don't they don't need them. They just they just don't need them. Effectively, every phone camera is a mirrorless camera. So what we do is we eradicate the mirror and we just use the shutter. And that looks like this. Now, there are a few things going on there. Not just the sensor is being exposed, but when you're taking a picture with a lens on the camera, light travels through the lens, hitting the exposed sensor. Well, you need lighting. The sensor then reads that light and its current information that it has and then transforms it into a picture. Basically what you're seeing right now. That's exactly what is happening 24 times every second right now. Hello. This is 24 frames a second video. Now the main difference between what you just saw and something on a mobile is basically this. This is a lens, a piece of glass. And that's the difference. This is made of glass. You can see the front element just there. And you can see the back element just there. All glass. And here is slats of glass, so to speak. They're lenses set up to a different arrangement to get a wider or telephoto length. So this goes from 24 millimeters to 105. But unfortunately, on something like a phone camera, there isn't really the room to put in real glass. Now, yes, our phones are made of glass, but because phones are dropped so many times, you need to kind of be able to withstand that. So most manufacturers, in fact, I think all manufacturers make them out of plastic and then cover them in a sheet of glass to protect the lenses. This isn't a lens. I can, in theory, if I wanted to, I could take this off and still use the cameras because this isn't a lens, this is a lens protector. Now, what you need to understand is the sensor size. This has a full frame 35 millimeter sensor because that's what it is. It's a full frame camera body. It's designed for that. Whereas this doesn't. This is designed really to get that one shot quickly. It's more of a happy little it's basically your point and shoot camera. That's what it's really designed for. It's designed to be a point and shoot camera. Whereas this is more professional. Same with kind of this, this 700D really. I mean, it's not professional, but it is, you wouldn't rock up to a wedding with a mobile basically as a photographer. That's what I'm trying to get at. I mean, you wouldn't really go with the 700D, but unless you're using it as a backup. That lovely out of focus area that you see when you see these nice portraits of people, that's depth of field. And you get that from the size of the sensor. The bigger the sensor, the better the depth of field. And because these mobile phone cameras have to be 
so, so small, you're not going to get much natural depth of field. Now, yes, you can get some really nice depth of field. I've got some really nice pictures on here of some really nice depth of field. But it's never going to be, obvi obviously, it's never going to be on the quality of that because it's not really designed for that. It's designed for when you go on holiday or if you go to the pub. So that's what you need to understand. First, the sensors and the lenses are completely different. They will always be worse than even a micro four thirds camera because they're not really designed for that kind of shooting. They're designed to just be in your pocket and be able to take a picture when you need to. So I am getting a little bit off track here. So in the last three or four years, 8K has really started to try to become the, you know, the standard for video production. Most of the time you will be shooting 4K. Most cameras shoot 4K. But if you're over the top and you want to buy something expensive, then you buy something like an Aerie Alexa or a Red Weapon. People like MKBHD and Linus Media Group or LTT, Linus Tech Tips, shoot on the RED cameras. They shoot at 8K, they colour grade it, and they downscale it to 4K or 1080p. Now these files are absolutely huge, absolutely huge, but they've got the infrastructure and the team there to handle it. But in the last two years, Canon and Sony have been kind of at each other for the best camera specs and Canon first came in with the Canon R5 shooting 8K. Now, yes, that did have a fair few down flaws. And then Sony came in just recently with the Sony A1, which doesn't have the flaws of the Canon R5, but doesn't have the Canon color sign. So tit for tat. Anyway, that 8K will always look better than something that is made on this because they have separate lenses, big sensors, fast memory card and good color processing science. Not so much on the Sony side, but that's my opinion. Well, the first problem with 8K on a phone camera is the fact that there is no stabilization whatsoever, as I'll be showing right now. It's just absolutely horrible, especially when you try and run with the camera. It looks just horrible. Then there is the file size. To get to 8K, it is absolutely huge files huge files compared to something like 4K. Then there is the matter of displaying that footage. Being able to display 8K is very, very, very difficult. While yes, you can get 8K TVs and 8K monitors, they are not cheap and they probably cost nearly the same amount as this device. And it is not good. It's just, no, no, no. Don't buy an 8K TV just to, just to shoot on this. It's just not worth it. It really isn't. And because it's really not worth it, you have to then compress the files, which is kind of okay. But if you've got that 8K quality there, then you kind of want to, you know, keep it here. You don't want to bring it down to a lower resolution. You want to keep it up here. But nobody really has an 8K monitor. And even when you're editing, even when you're editing, when I edit this and put footage above uh, the in the timeline above me, I have to downscale it to 4K. So what you're seeing isn't 8K footage, it is downscaled to 4K, which is perfectly fine. Downscaled 8K looks really good. You've still got a lot of detail there, but if you've got that detail, you wanna keep it in the original format, but YouTube doesn't really support 8K and the file sizes and, the stabilization and oh my god samsung what are you doing <sighs> anyway guys i'm a phone geek i'm gonna buy it and i will see you in the next one